There came a point early in the Pack Creek experience when everyone there sensed they were on to something. What started out as an invitation to discuss barriers to leadership in the state grew into a question of how this group might play a role in developing an environment in which leaders would emerge. The talk was lively and provocative, and a consensus existed about the need for more. In an attempt to give you a sense of the spirit that existed there, we prepared a tape of excerpts from the KUTV documentary that aired in November, which is followed by on-camera remarks from a few of the key people who took part in the conversation at Pack Creek Ranch. We recognize an increasing public apathy, and uh, uh, we apparently aren't willing to abdicate the, the responsibility that we individually feel or in our own spheres of influence. And, and that's why we're down here, to see if we can do something about uh, supplying some visions about where we will go if we don't do anything, mm -hmm. and where we want to go, uh, and can we do something about what it. What we need to do to do that. I agree. And uh, now it's time to break into groups and, and uh, answer that question. Uh, On Monday morning, the safety of the large group will give way to smaller, more active clusters. If we could put it in terms of metaphors, I guess I would think of the crawfish in the basket. You know, the old story that if you catch a bunch of crawfish and put them all in the basket, even though they can escape, they won't because Every time one often gets up a little ways, the other's pulling down. <laughs> and nobody escapes, and no one takes leadership, and nothing emerges. There seem to be a lot of people that are concerned that we don't have leadership. Mm -hmm. Project 2000, Urban Coalition, uh, Mission 2000. Is there an opportunity for melding these various movements together into, into a really meaningful movement that would, would result in some progress? Mm -hmm. So if you go back to education, whether or not our kids will be able to be educated in 20 years and find jobs here, who, what kind of coalition, what kind of leadership would be required that we don't now have women, we don't... We came to the conclusion that if any change is to occur, it will probably occur through the careful building of coalitions, and that coalitions are built in crisis. They're not really built in calm times. They're built when there's a tremendous need for a coalition to come together. But we were very unclear about where that would come from. And the final thing we left with is that there's change in the air. There's clearly change in the air. Everybody can feel it and smell it. There's a lot of sort of free-floating uncertainty, a certain amount of what always goes with that panic, <laughs> and that that's probably why we're all here talking about this, because we all feel that very, very keenly. I've heard over and over again today the need for a, for a coalition. Um, I think we've all agreed that the kind of leadership that we are talking about cannot and will not come from elected officials. And so, again and again, I've heard, as we've talked about the need for a coalition, how are we going to do it? What the mechanism is? Every time that question is asked, we back away and go off on something else. Nobody's addressing that issue. Could I throw out a, a startling idea? Oh, no. <laughs> Turn the cameras off. <laughs> I don't suppose there is in the state today any group more well positioned to take the leadership in seeing if such a coalition can be formed than this group here today. Bill Smart has refocused the discussion. The idea of a new coalition is born, but coalitions need a purpose or goals around which to rally. What kind of state do you want to live in for the next 15 years? Well, that relates to education and taxes and a whole lot of other things. But that, I think, would get everyone talking about their aspirations, their hopes, their desires, <coughs> and focus on that longer range uh, view and frame the issues so that we can have a dialogue with each other. I'd like to talk about how we make sure that we form the coalition properly and make sure that it's diverse and make sure that we 
understand the leadership role. I mean, we're pretty presumptive. We've decided there's a leadership role <laughs> lacking, and no, by the way, <laughs> we can fill it. <laughs> and I'd like to talk about who we ought to include in the role and how we form the coalition and keep that spirit alive. I think the spirit was good, and I think there was a spirit. I think there was a spirit of a crusade. Uh, I think that the particular part of the crusade is still sort of uncertain as to where it's going. But I think the spirit of the crusade is good. It's, and that is that the people of goodwill from different backgrounds and different interest groups and different perspectives can get together and can talk responsibly and make a difference in the state. And to do that, we're going to have to develop a whole group more of leaders, people who are really, uh, frankly, who are to step forward and, um, and take a stand and campaign for it. Uh, try to articulate that stand because y if you don't, the state will just ad go adrift and, uh, and, w and we really will fall down as a state. And uh, our future meetings um, will build upon the spirit of, um, of uh, commitment to uh, this leadership and planning for the state that was evidenced down here. Down here, I, I would hope that we would continue to try to have our actions and our opinions transcend uh, our own personal biases and uh, uh, self-interest. It was uh, clear that we are looking to pull together a co coalition of people who have influence and people who have a long-term, broad vision of the future of this state, as opposed to people who have narrow, short-term interests. And uh, really, there was 100% agreement with that from people you could hardly believe could sit down and room together and agree. I frankly was very amazed at the level of agreement about, first of all, a leadership void, and second, about the sharing of a vision for the future, and thirdly, a sense of willingness to, to think about that thoughtfully and to make plans and then to make the sacrifices necessary to move toward that vision. We have not just a, an opportunity to make a difference, but a sacred obligation to future members of our, of our society. And those are the people who are children now. And the, in the year 2000 and beyond, we have a, a duty to make of this state a place where those kids can get jobs, can have a good experience uh, in an educational system, can learn where they will not be discriminated against, where because of gender, or, or religious affiliation or, or ethnic group uh, where they will not be disadvantaged in access to the political, educational, occupational world. That we have a sacred trust and that if we default on that, we're immoral uh, and don't deserve to, uh, to be citizens of this state.